What's going on guys, Josh here with Techtopia TV and the Google Home Mini. Now Google Home is basically, it works with Google Assistant and what it does is it allows you to automate your house. Uh, you can use it to do voice searches, you can use it to control lighting, you can use it to do a lot of different things. And if you use the If This Then That website, you can actually program it to do way more things than you ever thought were possible. Now, I got this Google Home Mini uh, for Christmas present from my wife, and so I decided to play around with it, and we, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of fun with it, that's for sure. And it can do a lot of amazing things, but at the same time, it's pretty limited on some things as well. I mean, it's definitely a learning experience. It's going to get better as it goes. And <clears throat> anyway, that's basically the gist of it. So. The big things that I use it for are music. I use it to just do random Google searches. If I'm out, you know, just walking around the house, I can just have it read off the news in the morning. I can have it do all sorts of different things. So it has the typical uh, triggering of, hey Google or okay Google. Sorry if I just set off your devices, it happens all the time. Um, but anyhow, it has those different little triggers um, that set it off and then you can ask it questions, you can play trivia games on it, you can uh, control your Chromecast, you can control your lighting, you can control a lot of different things. So I a lot of times whenever I'm just kind of walking around, cleaning up the house, doing all this type, type of stuff, I'll just trigger it and ask it to play some music. I'm gonna say trigger it instead of saying the phrase because I don't want to set it off if you guys have one. So what I usually do is I usually have it play music. So if I'm walking around cleaning up the house, I'll have it play some music for me. I'll ask it to turn on a movie or play something on my Chromecast, which is really cool because you can literally just say trigger phrase and then you can tell it to play a specific movie and if you have multiple Chromecasts, say you have a Chromecast in my office or I have a Chromecast in my bedroom or my living room, I can literally say, trigger phrase, play Back to the Future 2 on Netflix on Chromecast 1 or Chromecast living room, a Chromecast bedroom, and it will play the, that movie on that Chromecast. So it's really fun. Um, I have the uh, Lumi bulbs. Um, so it's kind of like the Philips Hue, but it's not the Philips Hue. And for whatever reason, it's not supported yet, um, which was kind of a bummer. But um, I tried using the If This Then That website, the IFTTT. Um, I tried using that app or that website and setting up my own instructions. So, you know, if I said the trigger phrase and then said, you know, turn lights on in office, it would turn that bulb on automatically using Google Home. And for whatever reason, it wasn't working for me. I got it set to where um, there's one that's already pre-made to turn them off, but there wasn't any to set to where I could change colors or have it turn on for me or whatever. I tried to have it set up to where I could say, um, you know, turn on or um, let there be light or something like that and it would turn on this office light and for whatever reason I couldn't get it to work. It said it was set up properly. I was on the phone, I was on the website, on my, on my uh, computer and it said that it was set up and it said that it was working properly and the phrasing was there but for whatever reason it wasn't working. Um, uh, Google Home would constantly just tell me that it wasn't set up properly or I need to go into settings and make sure that it's turned on or make sure that my bulbs is compatible, things like that. So it was kind of hit and miss there and um, it wasn't a huge deal to me, so I didn't really care that much. Um, but it was kind of crappy that I wasn't able to do that. I really wanted to and play around with it some more. Um, but the other uh, big thing is, is uh, like I said, you can do trivia with it, so that's fun. Um, you can ask it for like cooking directions, like it'll give you recipes. And um, I, you know, the thing that I think wowed me the most is that I could be in the middle while testing it. I could be in the middle of a recipe, having it run through the steps, and you literally it'll tell you, you know, oh, crack two eggs into this bowl. You crack the two eggs into this bowl, and then you say, okay, go to the next step. 
or something along those lines and it will go to the next step. Well, right in the middle of working that recipe, I started asking it all sorts of random freaking questions. Like I started asking it, you know, about how much does an elephant weigh or how much does a blue whale weigh or, um, you know, what time is this show or, you know, this show starting or what time is this place open? Give me directions to this place or, you know, all sorts of stuff. And then I would go right back to saying, okay, continue on to step three. And it remembered that I was working a recipe and automatically went to step three. That right there just kind of blew my mind because you could be in the middle of doing something and while you're working, like say like the step that you're on right now takes a good long while. You could literally be working that one thing and just turn around and ask it a bunch of questions while you're working, kneading, you know, kneading dough or baking something or whatever it is that you're doing. And you could literally turn around and have a conversation with it and it will still remember where you were. Now that, that in itself was pretty amazing. Um, one thing I will say is that a lot of reviews that I've read and reviews that I've watched have really knocked it on the speaker quality. First of all, the thing is tiny. Like it's literally like the size of a puck. Like it's maybe three and a half inches across, maybe an inch and a half deep. Um, what do you expect? I mean, it sounds a lot better than a cell phone speaker. And I mean, you're not going to get whole room audio or whole house audio from it. It's not a speaker system, but every single review that I was reading about said, well, not, I wouldn't say every single review, but a lot of the reviews knocked it for its sound quality, saying that it wasn't impressive. And it's like, what the hell do you expect? I was pretty impressed. I mean, I can definitely tell that obviously if you turn it up to 10 or 11 or whatever the max volume is, I think it has 11 just as, you know, the typical joke of turning it to 11. But I want to say that if you turn it all the way up to the very, very peak, obviously it's going to have some clipping, it's going to have some distortion, it's going to sound kind of muddy and kind of crappy. But like the perfect listening level for whenever you're just cleaning or working on something or if you have it in your office and you're just like working on homework or you're doing some kind of, you know, um, task where you just need some nice ambient music, something just to kind of, you know, add some filler to the room. It is absolutely perfect for that. Perfect. Hey Google, play Bird Brains by Otis McDonald. All right, here's Bird Brains, Otis McDonald on YouTube. Um, it doesn't need to be loud and it sounds good. I've listened to many different genres with it and all of them have sound amazing on this thing. And I mean, obviously there's some learning here. Um, I, you know, I, I could tell it to play a certain song multiple times and a lot of the times, I'd say probably, I'd say probably 50, 60% of the time it gets it wrong. And when I say this, I mean like I'm playing abstract stuff. Like if you tell it to play, you know, some really, you know, popular, you know, pop hit that's on the radio right now, like Bruno Mars or something like that, it will always find it. Of course it will always find that. Um, but if you ask it to play something like super off the wall by a band that's like not really that well known, um, it will struggle sometimes and it will play something completely different. Um, so that is definitely an issue that I've noticed, but I figured that would be one of those things that are, is going to happen because, again, it's not really in its vocabulary, so it might not hear that. Um, but other than that, the thing is, the build quality is amazing. It looks good. Um, we got the, the gray one, the, the pebble gray, I guess is what it's called, I don't remember, but um, it looks really nice. It's super small and out of the way, so you, a lot of people don't even know it's there. Um, I had some people come over for New Year's Eve um, whenever they came over and I started asking it questions, asking to play music, and people didn't even know where it was. They couldn't even tell where it was, and it was on the countertop next to um, some other, you know, odds and ends and trinkets and stuff. And so 
that's really nice. It fits in, it doesn't look out of place, it doesn't look really crappy. Um, but again, for what it is, it's awesome. I like it. Um, it's, uh, you know, I know that there's other ones out there. They have Alexa and some other ones. And then, um, you know, Apple has its HomePod coming out, which I think may have been too little too late on that one. So, um, in my opinion, I think that the Google Home Mini is the perfect balance. You have the Mini, which I believe is, I wanna say is 50 bucks. We got it for 25, I think it was, because um, it was on sale for Christmas. But I, I wanna say it's uh, 49 bucks, so $50. And then you have the next step up, which is just the Google Home. And then they have the Google Home Pro or whatever the hell it is. And it's a gigantic speaker and it's like $400. The other one's 150, I believe. So for 50 bucks, you can't really beat it. I mean, it does everything that the other ones do. It's just it has a slightly smaller speaker and might not sound as good as the Pro does, but it should sound better because it's a bigger box. I mean, it's like, it's a good size speaker box. So anyhow, guys, what I'm saying is that the Google Home Mini, if you're, if you have an Android or even an app, or, you know, iPhone, I have an iPhone, I have Chrome, two Chromecasts in the house, and for fifty dollars, it's well worth it. If you want to get into some kind of a little bit of home automation, have get a little bit of you know smart features in your house, be able to control like your Nest AC equipment or AC um, thermostat lighting things like that, you can't really go wrong with it. Um, it's on par with Alexa, so that really, you just gotta kind of figure out what, you know, ecosystem you wanna jump into, I guess. Um, there's a lot of things that I could probably do more if I had an Android phone and was deeper back into Android, but for all my purposes, as far as playing music, having it play something on YouTube or on my Chromecast, or yeah, on my Chromecast, it's super simple. I can ask it to play, you know, Linus Tech Tips on Living Room Chromecast or something like that, and bam, it'll automatically turn my Chromecast on, which because of the way that it's set up, turns my receiver on, it turns on my TV, and it just starts playing the video all on its own. I don't have to touch anything, anything like that. It's awesome. So anyway, guys, this has been Josh with Techtopia TV. I know it's been a while since I made a video and I'm late to the whole smart home party, but I figured I needed to get this video out there and you guys will see me in the next one. Take it easy.